my mic, welcome to the workshop. Now you may have noticed that this is not my normal backdrop and that's because this week's project is going to be based around building a handle for my door here. So when I built these doors about a year ago when I converted this into a workshop, I always intended to have a handle on the inside and well let's just say the best laid plans of mice and men. This was, I think I used it for a cable or something in a whole workshop. I screwed it on saying, oh, I'll put a proper handle on it eventually. And this is how these things go. But it's getting into winter now. I'm going to be shutting my door all the time to keep in that sweet, sweet heat and keep out that poor, poor cold. So we're going to make something for this. And because it's me and I'm not right, uh, I'm going to make something completely unnecessarily complicated and uh, I'm gonna have you come along with me for the ride so I'll bring you down to the work I'll bring you down to the workshop so I'll bring you down to the bench show you my sketches and we can get going so this is our design based in part on big handles that you might see on a castle or something so we're going to have an oak handle mahogany spacers and a walnut back so that'll be a nice mixture of materials that'll look really nice. So the first step will be to rough out all these materials. And I have some scrap there and I'm going to get it out of those pieces of scrap. So we'll start with our handle, which is going to be 30 by 30 squared. And we're going to turn it into an octagon. We'll also machine out these spacers, which will be our mahogany and our walnut back. So construction wise on this, I'm going to use through tenons to go through the handle and through the back to fix it and then we'll have a series well series two square holes a top and a bottom where I will screw it to the door and then plug that with a mahogany piece that will look kind of like an old nail you know a hand forged nail and just cover it over those screw holes so first thing to do is um get this baby cut up and machined to size. So as live action Mike said there, I'm using scraps for this. So my first step is to cut everything roughly to size. Then I'll bring it over to my planar thicknesser, give myself a square edge, a square face, then cut it down much closer to the size I want, and then finally machine it to final dimensions. This is handy when you're using smaller stock, particularly bits of scrap, because it could be a bit of a bend or a bow in it. And that way you're removing the least amount of material to get the material that you want. So here on the bench three pieces that are machined out. This is my walnut back. This is going to be my mahogany spacers. I'm going to start on my oak handle. So the first thing I'm going to do here, break my octagon. With an octagon, it's actually quite easy to, to work out where your angles are going to be. So what you want to do is strike a diagonal across. Oh, fucker. I'll read you that line. Cross so that the points are meeting diagonally. That'll give you a center point. And then the diameter of the circle we're going to draw is the same as the size of this. So this is 30 mil. So I need a 15 mil radius. I'm going to drag out my dividers here. Go 15. A bit closer. So from that center point, I'm going to mark just a series of 15 dots. Make sure it's touching it. And where I put in those marks, I'm going to get my bevel square here and mark 45. So, with all of this done, we should end up with all the faces being the same length. Thank you. 
I'll do the same on the other end, turn to my lines across the faces, but I won't cut that diagonal out yet, so I won't cut sorry, the angles off to make the octagon yet. I'm going to do all my jointing first and then add that's not a bad octagon. So like I said, I'm gonna do this side, do the other side, transfer these lines down. That'll let me know where my flats are and that's where I'll be putting in my tenons. When I have my tenons done then I'll use those lines as my reference to plane this down and get our octagonal handle. So as this is a making video, I'm not going to go too into depth in marking here, but just a few tips that I find help. I will always mark off the piece of material that I have that's actually machined out. This proves to be more accurate in my experience. And also in this case, I marked a center line on both my handle and my big back piece, pardon me. This means that the lines can be transferred from one to the other and they'll line up as they will when they finally interact. So I'll just leave with a bit of music while this hours long process continues in seconds. these marked up so I'm going to cut these marks first and match my tenants to them just in case anything goes wrong now my preferred method you see my videos before for hand uh, mortising is not using a hold fast for a start but what I like to do is to pour out the bulk of the material that you see here using a drill and then just clean up the side using a chisel coming in from both sides I find this gives me the best results. So you want to go close to the size of your hole, but not the full width. So I'll probably, this is a 10 mil mortise, so I'll use a nine mil drill bit. I'll drill through three holes, clean it all up with the chisels. I'll do the same for this walnut piece. And then we'll mark all our tenons on these, cut them to length, we'll mark our tenons and fit them. And then it's time to chamfer off these edges to make this an octagon. So this is a great kind of weekend or one day kind of project. So let's get to drilling some holes. Still within the lines, we're good. So of course you can avoid drilling the hole into your rooftop. 
You can come in from both sides as well. You know, it's steady. I'll show you that now. Stop that about halfway through. You can see if I can get three in on this one. That's a new one to three. Just about halfway through. Of course, if you don't have a hole fast, you can just use a normal clamp. Hole faster hand. Now we can start chipping and chopping. Now that we have our mortises done, it's time to work on our tenons. I start this by first cutting our dividers to length. These work out about 100mm long, which gives me 50mm or so between the handle and the back plate. Once I have these cut out on my bench hook, I'll bring it over to my shooting board and square up those edges before I start marking my tenons. And as I said before, I like to mark my tenons off my mortises just in case anything goes wrong when I'm cutting the mortise and cut the tenon to suit. Now, as it happens here, I could have got away with just marking them and cutting them straight off, but that's not going to happen every time.
yeah, I think that'll do. So, now it's time to do our octagons here. I'm going to shape our top. I'm going to glue this in. It's fine enough to go on the best select bar in Dublin. Okay, let's get to that. So to do our octagon, we need to make a little jig. This is the simplest form of this. All it is is a couple of little 45s glued on in a line. That'll allow us then to sit our piece in like that at 45 and clamp. So we're always planing in a flat direction. So we just put this guy in our ice. We have our little channel. We put our piece into it. Again, making sure that we're going with the grain. And be very careful. We just slowly work our way down to that line. And I'm going to put in a little stock here, I think. Normally when I use this, I'm working with slightly shorter stock. And it doesn't bobble too much. But I won't bore you with that. We'll go to a time lapse. So now with the handle shift, it's time to focus on the back. And if you remember the design, this is just very simple. I'm just going to cut a 45 off the corners. And then I'm just going to go around with my router and create a nice deep chamfer. So there's no need to go into detail here. I'll just smack through a bit more music. sanded and glued up it's everyone's favorite time obligatory danish all time Handle 
the level of complexity necessary for the job as intended for. <laughs> I'm only joking. I mean, I could use a bent nail to close the door of my shed. But this is a fun little project. And sometimes that's all it needs to be. Fun. It's also good for practicing your mortise and tenon joinery and your planing accurately. And just generally getting out there and doing something. Like I said, this is an easy enough weekend project if you could know someone who could just machine this stuff out for you and just have at it. So, this is no use on my bench. So let's put it on the door. And uh, yeah, get this baby to work. So thank you all for staying to the end of the video. Like I said, this is a fun little project. So if you like all little mad things like this, don't forget to like, subscribe, and of course, absolutely do try this at home. And now for some bloopers. So currently in Ireland, it's getting into deep autumn. Ah, oh, it's getting into autumn everywhere, isn't it, Mick? Not really in the Southern Hemisphere. It's not it's heading more summer uh, Christmas of course uh, happened in the summer in Australia 